Hey babies, I'm feeling a little miffed. You may even say that I'm grieved in the spirit. And just a little bit about myself that when I when I have uh, found myself in funks like this before, <laughs> when I got that thing in my craw, I cry really loud till I get my way. And everybody finds out, everybody hears about it. So I mean, let, let me just uh, go ahead and engage some of these powers of my persuasion for you because there, there are some trends that I'm picking up on these days. Uh, there's some forums on social media and even people that I know in my personal life that, that are um, conscientious, ascending, aspiring for a higher consciousness. There, there, there's a verbiage and there is a trend and there is a conclusion for some of these thoughts that, that rubbed me wrong. I'm all for being aware. I'm all for being the best you that it's possible, possible for you to be. But in this process of ascension, in this process of awakening and becoming higher in your consciousness, in this process of being a pest at family gatherings where you compelled to red pill people. I mean, babies, this is the same mentality I had when I was beating the pavements in the inner city, passing tracks out to everybody being a holy terror. Been there, done that. I'm not going there. Ascend all you want. I'm not going to participate in the, sanct the sanctimony. And it's sanctimonious. You higher consciousness aspires, you are sanctimonious. And I'm just saying it. And there is a particular topic, a contention about the virgin birth that just came up. It, it was the last straw. There, that, there, something came out about the virgin birth and then the uh, suggestion came out. That, well, well, you're not red-pilled enough. It, it, you're not really awake because you still believe in the virgin birth. Listen, babies. You can uncover... Stone after stone after stone after stone. You can unlearn all you want. You can destruct, deconstruct your theology, your paradigms, and your dogma. But when it comes down to truth, you've really got to ask yourself that after you've destroyed everything, <laughs> after you've leveled the playing field of your mind, what are you left with? Has your deconstruction become uh, an end in itself? Has your deconstruction become a dogma? Sounds like it. Because the objective of turning out over stone after stone after stone after stone is the aspiration for truth. And the truth is greater than you. The truth is greater than your aspirations. The truth is greater than your personal ascension. The truth is greater than whatever consciousness you think that you have ascended unto. So maybe there is just a, a margin of chill there maybe maybe there is there's a cooling of the jets maybe this 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 philosophical and uh metaphysical um compulsion that people have really needs to lay off because who was it nietzsche i think nietzsche talked about finding out what was true and poking paradigms and showing things as untrue and, and, and but, but he was motivated for a desire for truth and you're going to end up in a spot of desperation nihilism depression and despair if you just turn over stone after stone after stone looking to find out what truth is when it could be staring you right in the face because you don't ascend to truth truth comes to you truth is revealed to you and as far as the virgin birth jesus is the only begotten Son of God. He is the only one. And uh, after everything is said and done, and all your stones are turned over, and everything's destroyed, and you level the playing field of your mind, you're going to be left with truth. You're going to be left with the way, the truth, and the life. And I, I get this chafing. I get this reaction when I go here, when I go to this place, when I use the J word. And, and I haven't felt this uh, 
critical. I haven't felt this this edgy above this topic in a really long time. But, but when you start poking the identity of who Jesus is, when you start messing with paradigms, you start suggesting that you got to unlearn and level the playing fields of your mind and, and you start playing with people's heads, you know, it's time to pipe up and it's time to, to stand into what you really believe because there are creeds. There are things that we believe. There are things that we stand in. There's foundations that we have. And that is that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And hit against that as much as you want, babies, with your higher consciousness, with your ascension and your delusions of sanctimony. Hit against that as much as you want. Because in the end, you're going to find out what the truth really is and find out that he's not ethereal, that he's not nefarious. He's not the universe. He's a person. And he's in your face. And he's been there for a long time. And all you're revving up and spinning your wheels to ascend, he's been in your face. The truth has been there. Been right in front of you the whole time. Because the, the word says, the apostle John says, there's one that stands in your midst and you don't even know him. He's right in your face. And something that, that comes to me from some of these discussions that I've had with people on social media and in real life is that, that, that uh, well, we're all gods. Of course, Jesus was a god. He showed us the way to be a god. Just he, he was an example for us. He came into the world so that we could be assisted by his example unto our ascension. He's the only begotten. My life is hidden in him, and your life is hidden in him too. He is our life. And when you start understanding, the, you get to the end of yourself, when you start understanding when you've leveled the playing fields of your mind and cover, uncovered all these stones and basically made a mess of your life, because that's where you're headed, you're going to find out <laughs> that he's been there and that he will, he's not going anywhere and that we'll all be compelled into allegiance into the only begotten because it ain't for nothing that Jesus Christ is called the only begotten of the Father. Because the whole context of the fatherhood, the whole context of him being in relation to his father, the whole proximity that the son has in relation to his father is something that's absolutely missing from these ascenders and these higher consciousness seekers. They, they want to ascend to what? They want to ascend to where? <laughs> they want to ascend to Pluto, Pleiades, Orion. I, I don't know. They, they want to rub shoulders with the avians and the greys. I don't, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know where they're going. But they don't. I, I don't think they even know where they're going. It's uncharted territory. And unless you have some sort of allegiance to the only begotten, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Because it isn't the universe. It isn't nefariousness. It's the Father. And he's the only begotten of the Father. And your angst, in, the, in, in, in as much as that statement makes you chafe, this is what I hear. This is what I hear when you, when you have that tenor of angst. When I talk about Jesus Christ being the way, the truth, and life, as Jesus Christ in proximity to his Father as being the only begotten Son of God. This is what I hear. I hear... Who do you think you are, Jesus? Who do you think you are? You, you must be all that. Jesus, you think you're all that. Jesus, you're all, you, you're the only begotten. We're all the only begotten. Who, you, you gotta check your privilege. Jesus, you gotta check your privilege. Check your privilege, Jesus. That's Antichrist. Do you realize that? That's what the Apostle John talked about. That angst, that envy, that bitterness is fucking ridiculous. And it's Antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son is Antichrist. He who denies that Jesus came in the flesh. He who denies that the truth is with you and is in your face. And it's not some higher consciousness aspiration, not some process of ascension, that the truth is with you. And you don't go there. He comes here and he's with you. And there's one that stands in your midst that you don't know. And you're not enlightened. And you're not conscious if you don't see him. <laughs>